Recently, something has come to my attention that is very troubling. So I was not aware of how many crested geckos there are who are over a year old and still the size of a hatchling. I thought this was a one-off when I first saw it, but I keep seeing more and more geckos like it. So me being me, I did some research, I looked at what I do in terms of caring for my geckos, what other people do, and I've compiled a list of 10 reasons a crested gecko's growth is stunted and or it's lost its appetite. I would do two separate videos, but some of these points are linked together, and in some cases the reason the gecko's growth is stunted is due to loss of appetite, and sometimes loss of appetite is due to the gecko's growth being stunted, so occasionally they go hand in hand. So let's start off with number one. Diet. So a lot of people used to use baby food and crickets as a main diet. Please do not go down this route, this diet is very outdated. It's high in sugar and not so much in nutrients, so it causes the gecko to gain a lot of weight, too much in some cases, but it also rids the gecko system of nutrients and usually this will result in the gecko getting metabolic bone disease. I highly recommend a Pangea or a Pashi diet whilst offering them a varied diet of insects once a week, making sure of course that the live food is supplemented. Usually I find they are more interested in insects that move quite quick. For example, my crested geckos will never eat waxworms or calcium worms and seem to prefer things like crickets. Make sure the insects aren't too big as your gecko won't bother attempting to catch them at all. And I highly recommend feeding your gecko outside the tank one insect at a time. This way you know exactly how much they're eating you don't run the risk of your gecko getting bitten by a feeder insect and the insect doesn't end up living in the terrarium. Also, if your gecko isn't really eating enough of their diet, try a different one. I know it can be expensive, but when I first got Lyra, she was on Rapashi. She was eating it, but she only really started enjoying her food once I swapped to Pangea. Saying all of this, I still believe we're in the very early stages of truly understanding a crested gecko's wild diet. So who knows, in a few years we may be offering something completely different to the powdered diets we offer now. Number two is hydration. Now you'll be surprised how much your crested gecko can actually drink. I find spraying the tank down twice a day really doesn't do too much in a way of fully hydrating your gecko, as I feel most of the time the water evaporates too quickly. Now you can always offer a very shallow water dish or a plant such as a bromeliad for your gecko to drink out of. Or you can go the extra mile and sit there and offer water yourself, along with spraying down the tank of course. Now this may be a great bonding technique whilst you're trying to tame your gecko. What I do is use the end of the spray bottle nozzle thing and let the water drip out and Isla will just lap it up, she loves it. I've also tried using a small water syringe with my other crested gecko and once again I let the water drip out of it and she will drink it. Obviously never actually squirt the water in their mouth, they could easily choke. Now I find once they're fully hydrated they are more likely to seek out food so they get their appetite back. Also a lack of hydration will definitely affect the growth and development of your gecko. Number three is temperature. So apparently hatchlings kept between 75 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit between April and September tend to grow a lot quicker than those kept in cooler temperatures. Crested geckos, like other reptiles, are ectotherms, so they rely on their environment to keep warm and for their body to function correctly. Although you must take into consideration that crested geckos can die of heat stroke if their temperatures exceed 85 degrees Fahrenheit for too long. The best thing we can do is look at the climate of the country where they're found, New Caledonia, and try to mimic those temperatures. Or like the hatchlings, you could make sure the temperatures are in the late 70s from April to September as this may prompt a growth spurt in your gecko. If you choose to use heating equipment, make sure you monitor the temperature with a thermometer and a thermostat. I've heard that heat mats only seem to overheat one wall of the tank, so some kind of lamp may be better, whether that be one that emits light or not. Number four, the enclosure itself. So babies should be kept in a small enclosure to lessen the risk of injury if they fall, also to reduce stress and to make it easier for them to find food. Also make sure there's plenty of things for your gecko to climb on and hide in. At the same time, if you're not providing a big enough enclosure, this may also stunt their growth. A crested gecko should start off in a small container, eventually going up to a 30 by 30 by 45 or 45 by 45 by 45 centimeter terrarium. 
Then once it's over six or seven months old, you can move into a 45 by 45 by 60 centimeter terrarium. This is a minimum size for an adult. I find glass terrariums work best. Whenever I build a natural terrarium, I put my crested geckos in a large plastic, well ventilated container with artificial plants. And I find that in this time, they rarely fire up, their activity levels drop and they eat less. So maybe if your gecko is currently in a plastic container, you may want to change that to a glass terrarium. Number five, handling. I've always bought crested geckos who are at least six months old, so handling them has always been very easy. However, hatchlings are very small, skittish and easily stressed. So when you first get them, let them settle in, try to leave the handling to a minimum. Stress can negatively impact their overall health, which plays a major role in appetite loss and stunted growth. Other things that cause stress include aggressive cage mates, shipping, ill health and an inadequate environment. Number six, exposure to light. So the amount of daylight or just in general light that the gecko receives in the day will affect the gecko's health. If you keep your gecko in a basement with no light at all or in an opaque plastic tub, which I certainly do not recommend, then they are unable to distinguish day from night. This may affect their growth rates and it will certainly affect their biological clock. Number seven is incubation time and hatching weight. This is why an ideal situation is to buy your gecko from a decent breeder who can tell you all the background information you need to know about your particular gecko's development. Now usually geckos that were incubated for 80 to 100 days generally hatch out larger. This is achieved when the gecko's eggs are kept at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If they're kept around 80 degrees, they tend to hatch out quicker and weigh less. Geckos with higher weights after hatching tend to go on to grow and gain weight a lot quicker. Number eight, genetics. So similar to the last point, if you know the breeder, it really helps. And sadly, I don't know the breeder for my two crested geckos, and I know all too well how hard it can be to find a breeder. But if you're lucky enough to know a decent breeder, they'll usually show you the parents of your gecko, so you kind of know what to expect in terms of size when your gecko reaches adulthood. Usually the best and safest breeding occurs when the male and female are similar sizes, so there shouldn't be too much genetic variation when it comes to the offspring size. Ideally, a female should be at least 35 grams if she's going to be bred with. This minimizes the health risks involved with producing, carrying and laying eggs. Now, not too surprisingly, a smaller female will lay smaller eggs. Smaller eggs will usually hatch out smaller babies. So these unlucky guys really don't get a head start in life compared to those eggs from a larger female that were incubated for a longer time. Now that's an ideal situation. Number nine, parasites. Pinworm in particular is worryingly common and a very good reason why a crested gecko's growth may be stunted. Testing for pinworm or any other parasite is very easy. All you need to do is take a poop sample to your vet to be analyzed. And finally, number 10, your location. So funnily enough, wherever you live can actually affect your gecko's development. For example, if you live in a country that has very low temperatures and low humidity or short periods of daylight, this can easily affect your gecko. The way to combat these problems is to adjust conditions in the terrarium to accommodate your gecko's needs. Now, all too often we hear that the gecko will be fine in room temperature and the light they already have, daylight. That is fair enough for some countries, and I would say in England, to a certain extent, that's pretty fine. If you live down south where we have a lot of sun, nice warm temperatures, it's all very good. But if you live in more northern countries where the daylight certainly reduces in winter, the temperatures certainly drop, you may need a few additional things to improve your gecko's life. So that was the list. Now, one thing I would like to say is often people ask me, where can I find a cheap gecko? And I really hate that because I don't think you should be striving to find a cheap gecko. You should be striving to find a healthy gecko. And I just want you to remember when you go into these shops and you see, oh, half price Crested Gecko, you're tempted to buy it. Just remember that some of these shops, their breeding facilities aren't particularly ethical. So they may not be caring whether the female is actually big enough to be bred with. So then her eggs could come out smaller. Then to keep up with demand, they want to shorten the incubation time. So they raise that temperature. Those small eggs hatch out even smaller babies. Those babies are exposed to a whole lot of stress being shipped to different shops, being put in unfamiliar environments, possibly put with cage mates as well. 
and not really being monitored to see how much they're really eating. So you could potentially be buying a gecko who's been exposed to a hell of a lot of stress. So that will really affect their health when they're with you. Anyway, it'd be interesting to know whether those people who have geckos whose growth has been stunted, did you get your geckos from a shop, a breeder, or even a previous owner? That'd be pretty interesting to know. Anyway, looking back at the list, maybe all you need to do is make a few subtle changes and that could positively impact your gecko's life. I would absolutely love to see the before and after photos. If you do see improvements, so send them to me on Instagram. When I got my second Crested Gecko, she was from a previous owner, she was over a year old, she was only 17 grams and within 10 weeks of living with me she doubled her weight. So it can be done, so you know, even in those days where it feels like the gecko is not growing at all, just keep with it, keep positive and you'll soon see results. Anyway, I hope this has helped, if you know someone who's in a similar position, gecko's got stunted growth or lack of appetite send them this video hopefully it'll help them as well so thank you very much for watching guys and goodbye